Hello, everybody. Welcome to Inside Geocaching HQ, the podcast about the goings-on at Geocaching HQ in Seattle. My name is Chris Ronan. My username is Rock Chalk. And on this episode, a special treat. I am having a conversation with a number of geocaching volunteer reviewers from around the world. This is the first of several conversations that I'll be sharing here on the podcast. These are the people who spend countless hours reviewing cache submissions, serving the geocaching community, and just doing a lot of really great things for the game of geocaching. Through the magic of Zoom, I have connected with volunteer reviewers from countries all over the world. And in this first conversation, I am chatting with folks from Switzerland, the Netherlands, Arkansas here in the United States, and Israel. And in future episodes, I will share conversations with reviewers from even more countries as we get some really great insights into what these volunteers enjoy so much about being community volunteer reviewers. So, I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. Okay, well, we have a a very internationally diverse conversation here with reviewers in in four different parts of the world. And I think it'll be great to hear the different insights that you all have and, and a lot of a ton of experience here among among this group. So uh, let's just start by everybody introducing themselves. I'll, I'll, I'll start with Urs. What is your reviewer name? Where do you review? And how did you get started in this whole community volunteer reviewer role? Yeah, my name is Urs. Uh, my reviewer name is Zrebelis. And uh, I am part of the team that reviews in Switzerland and Liechtenstein. I think I've been doing it for three or four years i'm not even sure without checking and i got into it by by being asked by my uh, colleagues who are reviewing in switzerland they had a vacancy with somebody stepping down and they approached me and actually the first time they asked me i turned them down because it was just not a good time uh, in my life we had just bought the house and moved and i didn't think i'd have the time and then a year later they came back and asked again and I said yes, and here I am. Renee, how did what is your username or your reviewer name, and and how did you get roped into this whole thing? Well, my story is quite similar. Uh, my reviewer name is uh, Diogenes, just a Dutch uh, pronunciation, or Diogenes for the uh, English audience. Um, I became a reviewer, uh, I think, almost six years ago, and like Urs, I was asked by. Uh, other reviewers because uh, they had a lot of work and uh, two little hands so i just um, stepped in and up until today it's a fantastic job oh, that's great jonathan how about yourself i'm i'm the reviewer for israel so i have a little bit of a different story from others because uh, care of an entire country is changes kind of your perspective and the way you deal with the job so my reviewer name is Matmunai. Uh, everybody in Israel knows me very well here. Uh, I think I have a large fraction of the uh, population here, the, the geocacher population on my cell phone on, on quick dial. So I can tell them, <laughs> you know, you've done a bad job here. You've done a good job there. I can ask for clarifications. It's really a different job in my case, I think. So my name, Matmunai, is Hebrew for... It's actually a very interesting word. It's the person whose job is to deal with treasures. Okay, there aren't many languages where there's a word for that, but there is in Hebrew. So I grabbed it. Everybody really likes it, I think. And uh, yeah, I've been doing it ever since and involved for about five years. And I I saved for last... Uh, the the one reviewer name that I feel confident in pronouncing without asking for help, and that is Chuck Walla from from Arkansas. Hello, Frank. Hi, this is Chuck Walla. Uh, as Chris said, I'm the reviewer for Arkansas, and I also review for Oklahoma, which uh, for those folks in uh, other parts of the world that don't know the U.S., uh, they are a neighboring states. 
been the reviewer for Arkansas since 2006. So I guess I'm the old man in the group here. And uh, Oklahoma, I picked that up in 2017, so three years there, and uh, six, 14 years for Arkansas. For a short while, I did Louisiana as well for about a year. Uh, that was probably about four years ago. But like I said, I've been a reviewer that long, and uh, as I was telling the other reviewers, my name is basically a desert lizard. Uh, it lives in, uh, resides in the deserts like in uh, southwestern U.S., like Arizona. Um, I used to live in Arizona for a while, and enjoyed seeing these lizards. They're kind of interesting creatures. And uh, when I was looking for a reviewer name, um, I, I decided to pick that. So I'm not, my name is not Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking as, as we talked about this a little bit before we started recording as well, I think we could almost do a blog article about geocaching usernames, not just reviewer names, but because how many times do you meet somebody just out in the community and you hear their user, you, you haven't maybe met them before, but you've seen their username on logs or on cache pages. And then you actually hear the username and you think, gosh, I've been totally saying that differently for maybe a long time. And with at least three of you here, that's, <laughs> I've been saying your reviewer names one way in my head for many years, but now I'll have it down. <laughs> well, let's start by just kind of talking about what all goes into being a reviewer from your all standpoint, because I'm looking at each of you varying levels of experience, but each of you have been doing this now for at least four years, which is quite a long time. Urs, when you first got into this, was, was the level of commitment required to be a reviewer? Was it what you thought it would be now that you've done it for a while? Yeah, pretty much. Um, my colleagues who brought me into the role were fairly uh, open about how much time it would need. So in those years that I've done it, it's, it's pretty much matched what they told me to expect. Of course, it varies. In, in summer and spring, it's, it's a bit busier than in, in autumn and winter. But overall, I think it's, it's pretty stable. And you are part of a team, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how, how do you all, you know, balance things or bounce things off each other? How, what is the dynamic like within your team? I think we're a bit unusual uh, compared to other countries in that we take shifts. Seven people spread across five teams and we split uh, Switzerland and Liechtenstein in half. So we have two local queues that are roughly of the same volume and we have one team covering each half of the, those two countries for a week. So we have, we have one week shifts and basically we work one week on, one week off. And uh, the fifth team is, is, is more or less there to, to cover for uh, holiday absences and so on. So roughly we work two weeks out of four, maybe we get a two week break every once in a while. And during that week, we're responsible for that half of the country that we're assigned. Renee, besides being on a team that has multiple people, your wife is also a reviewer as well, correct? Yes, uh, she is. And uh, like in Switzerland, we have uh, seven regular reviewers plus one EarthCache reviewer, but he's also part of, uh, of our team. And unlike Switzerland, we don't have any shifts or divisions. We just take the cue for the Netherlands and whatever is there, we take it. We don't keep uh, our caches with us. We just put them back. And if they come back, they'll come in, in for the queue for general grab. My wife has one of the special roles in, in the team, and that's the uh, reaping part. Of course, it's very important to, to publish and review new caches. This is equally important to make sure that the quality of the, the caches uh, keep, a, keep a high standard. And that's where the reaping comes in place. And I think we have we are doing a pretty good job now in, in uh, the, the reaping process. That's, uh, that's how the Dutch team uh, operates. I would think that it would be nice to have someone, right? It's, it would be nice to have teammates, but then also to have someone, hey, there's, Renee, there's Ingrid. <laughs> hey, just wave. <laughs> the wonders of Zoom. She's, uh, she's reaping now. Oh, of course. So <laughs> not just to have teammates that you get to work with, but then also having someone 
right there, 10 feet away. If, if oh, something yeah. comes up that, that you might not be quite sure of to be able to collaborate sure. on things. It's, it's quite convenient just to, to have a sparring partner. If you have like doubts or questions about a certain cash, we can just uh, discuss it with one another. Frank, there in Arkansas and Oklahoma, you do not have a team that you're working with. So how do you get feedback or collaborate if, if there's questions that you might have about, about a cash submission? Most of the time, if I have a cash um, that I have a question about or uh, sitting on the fence about, uh, there's a place where we can go, uh, special forums for their viewers. And so I'll post a question there and ask about, hey, what do you think about this? And I, I usually uh, almost always tell the cash owner, hey, I've got a question about your cash. Uh, I'm going to get the opinion of other reviewers. And, uh, and I tell them what my problem is with their cash so they're aware of it. Um, sometimes they'll come back and actually make a change based upon my just making a comment or having some doubt. Other times they'll wait and see what the other reviewers come up with. And uh, it's, it's a good, it's a good form to get uh, feedback. You know, sometimes I'm off base on how I'm looking at something or maybe I've misinterpreted stuff. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, that's not the case. So uh, uh, that's, that's basically my network there um, as a single reviewer. Of course, I've had a lot of, reviewing over the years. And so a lot of it's just plain experience and handling situations in the past and knowing how they were, were handled and how they were resolved, uh, either through feedback from other reviewers or feedback from geocaching headquarters. I would think some people might look at it and say, you've been doing this for 14 years now, you've seen it all, but the game's always changing, isn't it? And, and new stuff is always popping up. Oh, uh, cash owners always, they have a way of coming up with new stuff all the time. Uh, it's just amazing what they can, what they can come up with, uh, what new ideas, uh, what curve balls they can throw at me, uh, in the reviewing process. Uh, you know, I, I know one of the things, there was a moratorium of challenges, uh, a few years ago, and it's amazing how many new challenges people can come up with. And, you know, we have to, as reviewers, we have to look at it. Does this meet the guidelines? And uh, it's amazing what people can come up with as challenges. Uh, most of the time they're, they're, yeah, I hadn't thought of that, but that's okay. Sometimes it's like, no, you can't do a challenge on that. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, th the other thing is, although I don't have a team, if I need to take some time off, if I'm traveling where I'm, uh, so sometimes I like to go to places where there's not internet service, uh, amazingly. Uh, I like to go through the Grand Canyon, to, to raft through the Grand Canyon about every three, four years. No internet service there. Plus, I don't carry my phone or my computer with me. So, uh, uh, but I, I reach out and there's other reviewers in the U.S. that will help me out. Uh, Hoosier Reviewer has been one that I've got, had help from. Uh, he reviews Indiana. And then um, Ish Kenta out of Louisiana has helped me out uh, in the past. Uh, he also does Mississippi. So, uh, Jonathan, you kind of referred to this earlier that Israel is, is kind of a unique situation uh, where, where the, the game is kind of a diff, at a different phase of its, maybe you'd call it its maturation process. Uh, how does that affect how you have approached the, the volunteer role there? Okay, so, so the volunteer role is, as I said, a little different in Israel, and I'm sure it's similar in a lot of small countries like Israel. I get a lot fewer caches in my queue than the others, maybe a quarter of what other cachers, uh, reviewers get. However, I spend a lot more time per cache. Uh, a lot of caches that I get are written in very poor English, so I have to uh, spend quite a bit of time, sometimes 20 minutes, half an hour, editing, typesetting, making sure that the cache is readable and okay. And then we have security issues. And uh, issues like um, people putting it in archaeology, uh, archaeological site. Uh, we had a cache uh, not long ago that we, they wanted to put in the international airport in Israel. You can imagine what kind of security issues we have there. Uh, and we got it done. We got it done. I managed to contact the, the head security person of the Israel Air, uh, International Airport uh, and make sure that that was okay. So we we go that extra mile for our caching community it's it's a very it's more personal i would say in israel and and we try we try to really do a little more 
because we have a little more time and and uh, uh, and there are fewer caches. I know you said that you're. I think you referred to yourself as a part-time translator, but I I, I do want to just hit on that a little bit. That volunteer role of of translators. Just maybe just give a real brief overview of of what that is for people that might be familiar with reviewers, but they they don't know as much about the folks that translate for the website and the geocaching apps. Sure. So we get every now, uh, I say we, I get an email from uh, uh, Geocaching HQ uh, every several months, I would say, with a new project, uh, a group of things to translate. Uh, sometimes these are announcements, these are Facebook uh, posts, and of course the big one, the uh, movie. The, the International Film Festival. Uh, this requires a lot of work. Usually I'm not able to do it all myself. I uh, lasso a few other volunteers that help me with those. And, and there's always people that are happy to help and, and we divide it up between ourselves and so we can get it done in a timely fashion. Uh, in the case of the film festival, I usually uh, uh, treat everybody that helps for, for a little, uh, for an extra uh, um, geocoin or something like that as thanks. And then oftentimes I host uh, the, the film festival over at, uh, at my place or, or at a place nearby. So, so we have the opportunity to do something for the community because, as, as I said, a lot of people in Israel don't, don't speak English. And, and uh, we, we thank the people that help. Well, I would love to hear from each of you some tips that you have for uh, the community, people that are thinking about placing geocaches, how they can make the process of, of cache submission go more smoothly for you and for them. Urs, let's, let's start with you. What are, what's some advice that you like to give to people when they, when they ask? Well, I think the basic thing that would really help is if every, everybody had read the guidelines before placing their first cache. There's so many things, uh, small things that take up time in reviewing that could be avoided if people had a look through the review uh, the guidelines and, and would know what they can do or shouldn't do. So that would be a first step. And the other thing is really to, to be uh, communicative. Uh, they have the chance to give us information to help us review their cache. And very often we just get very short sentences or a brief paragraph, just providing the minimal uh, information that they have. And sometimes it would be uh, easier if they just said a little bit more and, and volunteered some information uh, on their own without us having to go back and ask for things. So we could sort of save uh, doing the loop at the start where we have to go, okay, basically it looks okay, but I have those questions. And if you had uh, provided this information on your own, we wouldn't need to do this loop. The final thing I think is to really read our notes that we write when we uh, hand back a cache to, to be adjusted, to read those notes carefully because we, we give them the information uh, that we need. We, we tell them what the issues are. We tell them what they need to adjust. And very often they look at one of those things or address one issue and just skip over the other three that we also mentioned in the in the note. And that makes for a lot of extra effort and delay that is not necessary if they were more careful in, in reading our notes. So that would be my biggest wish, I think, for more careful reading comprehension. <laughs> Renee, how about advice from you? Yeah, I, I can fully find myself in the, the worst of ours on the submission process, we have similar issues in the Dutch community. Besides what we also see, the Netherlands is a densely populated country and it reflects in a very high cash density. So that often results in conflicts with other caches. So what we are recommending players to do before they submit a cache is let's have your location tested by us. We have a process called saturation check. They can submit a cache page, can be blank, but we can provide a yes or a no for the location they have found. It saves them a lot of work and frustration, and it saves us some work because most of the conflicts that we have in the cache process could have been avoided. So that's one tip. Um, another tip, People, 
please find a lot of caches before you even consider placing one of yourself. We see there, there's a relationship between the quality of the cache page, the review process, uh, the cache itself, and the number of finds the CEO has. Frank? I'll have to second what everybody else has said so far because I, I think the guidelines are very important. Uh, I would also tell new geocachers, go to the help center. There's a help center. There's a link for it at the bottom of the page or when you log into the website, if you're using a computer. And uh, the help center really has a lot of useful information about hiding geocaches and topics related to geocaching. I would suggest going there because a lot of times I get questions. If people had just gone to the help center, they would they would understand or they would already know the answer. There's also uh, regional policies, uh, uh, geocaching policies. Uh, there's a wiki for that. And for Arkansas, I have set up one. In Oklahoma, I've set up a separate one. I'd advise new geocache hiders to go to those wikis and see if there's any special requirements. For example, national parks typically don't allow geocaches to be placed within them, but there are certain places that maybe the park superintendent will allow it. So you need to get permission from them and get a permit. National forests within Arkansas and Oklahoma require permits. Uh, state parks require permits. That sort of thing that people need to be aware of. Um, that they, and I see a lot of new uh, geocache hiders typically submit a cache in a state park and they don't realize a permit is required first from the state park. I, I second the part about finding several geocaches. I, I, actually we responded to a geocacher this morning who wanted to make, they'd done one geocache hide, but they wanted to do a better one. And I said, well, look in your area and find one with lots of favorite points. Go and see what made them favorite caches, what, what was good about them. And that'll give you some ideas on how to improve your geocaches. One final thing I'll throw out is when you record your coordinates, check them, make sure they're right. And when you put them on the cache page, when you're developing the cache page, make sure you type them in correctly. Because that's one of the biggest problems I see is either coordinates that are quite a bit off from where they say the geocache is hidden. Or for example, I found geocaches submitted for Arkansas or Oklahoma that are in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, China, uh, Africa, the Pacific, you name it. I've, I've seen it different places and said, well, this can't be there because they entered the coordinates incorrectly when they were typing in the cache page. It's a simple self-check. And that's the key thing. Just self-check your page before you hit submit for review. Well, as we are all sitting in our homes because of this pandemic, I, I, I feel I should ask about how the pandemic has affected the review process for each of you in your, in your different locations. I, I imagine that it varies a little bit uh, in Switzerland and Liechtenstein, Urs, how has is, how is reviewing in the pandemic been different than prior? Well, we had a total suspension of all reviewing activities from mid-March till I think it was late May. Not so much because we were forced to by government rules. Uh, we were lucky insofar that uh, though we were recommended to stay home, uh, we were still allowed to to go outside as long as it was uh, close by to where we lived. So caching was an ideal activity to do for people who wanted to get outside. However, since we're a small place and we're also densely populated with caches, if we publish a new cache, very often these uh, first to find hunts turn into spontaneous mini meetings uh, and mini events of, of, of I don't know, maybe two or three, sometimes up to half a dozen or a dozen cashers who meet at Ground Zero, which is fun and uh, really a cool thing to happen normally. But with social distancing, it was something that we said, you know, it's probably not something we should encourage. And there's plenty of caches to be found without new ones being placed uh, to encourage people to meet in this fashion. So we stopped uh, publishing and reviewing during that time which uh, in large parts of the community was met with very much understanding, although they were the odd uh, cashier who, who didn't like that decision. For us, it was a nice break, except that we paid for it when we started again, because during the first few weeks, we had uh, probably 10 to 12 times uh, the caches we normally reviewed. So the, the, first, uh, the first week I pulled a shift, I think I spent uh, four or five hours a day just playing catch up 
and I go through my queue and I think, oh, I've probably cut it in half and I press refresh. And when the screen came up again, it was double the number it was before I even started. So, um, But we've been uh, publishing again since, since mid-May, late May. And uh, caching and reviewing wise, uh, things have returned to normal. Also, we started uh, sweeping again in June. So as far as geocaching is concerned, we're back to normal operation. Renee, how have things been affected in the Netherlands over the last several months? No, it's, it's quite similar to what uh, Urs just told. Uh, we stopped our submission process uh, mid-March and uh, we got back, I think, early May. And because we were expecting uh, quite a tsunami of new caches, we decided, okay, it will happen anyway. So let's review them and publish them all on the same date. That gives a lot of people opportunities to claim a first to find. And it's, well, it, it's, it worked out well. And, and after that, we just reconvened to the normal review process, normal publishing, except for the events. Uh, that took a little bit longer because we felt not comfortable to publish uh, events again because of the social distancing rules, because of the uh, stay at home policies. So that started back in, back in July. We started uh, publishing events again, but with restrictions. Most of the community uh, understood it, what, what we, we did. They supported us. And Jonathan, in Israel, how has the pandemic affected the review process for you there? Well, we basically had the same process as everybody else, but we had uh, an interim period. I don't know how, how it was with other countries. We had a few weeks where the, raw, where the law was you can leave within 500 meters of your house or to go to work. And there were people that were hiding in that period. And I was really on edge and I would uh, call a few people up that were doing a little, you know, taking a little too much advantage of that period because I was really concerned about people breaking the rules uh, in order to get there first to find. I didn't want that. So I talked with the people involved and it was very really helpful to have everybody on my uh, uh, phone book. And, and then we got through that. And then as a few weeks after that, they opened it up so you could go anywhere. So uh, the moratorium was lifted. And uh, yeah, we had the same kind of uh, deluge that uh, everybody else had. Uh, it was kind of fun to see and uh, invigorating. And yeah, no, it, was, it was wonderful. Well, by my count, there is 31 years of reviewer experience in this group here. When you, when you guys think about why you keep doing this, why you keep making this commitment, because it is a huge commitment as we've, as I've heard you all talking about just what you do as reviewers. There's a lot of time that goes into it. And, and Frank, you've been doing it the longest. I don't know if you could have imagined you were signing up for 14 years of this when you first started, but, but uh, what makes you keep wanting to do it? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess it's something to do. It's like a hobby. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm retired. I've been retired for uh, nine years now, full-time retirement. Uh, although I did work uh, part-time as a contract engineer for several years, but now I'm not even doing that. So it, it you know, gives me something to do in the morning when I get up, uh, grab a cup of coffee, sit down in front of the computer, and work my way through the review queue and uh, see what's out there, what uh, people have submitted for review. So uh, basically, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a hobby. It's something that keeps me interested. It's a way also I feel I can give back to the geocaching community, uh, kind of a service, if you would. And, uh, and it's good to have a network of friends uh, worldwide that uh, and communicate with and, uh, you know, learn about their experiences and see different perspectives of how uh, geocaching works in their countries or how different things are being affected by such things as a pandemic. Uh, Renee, how about yourself? You've been at this for about six years now, uh, you and Ingrid. What is it that you all enjoy about this so much? Well, what's not to like about it? It's a fantastic job. I'll do it now for, for a long time and do it with lots of pleasure. Um, it's supporting the game. That's, I think it's even a, a, an understatement because you help people, you help the game, you meet great new people 
Um, like last year when we were in, in Georgia at the mega event, we met a lot of American uh, colleagues and that was so, so much fun. And yeah, again, it's, it's a lot of fun to do and, and seeing your, your, your work results in, in new submitted caches and everything goes smoothly. That's, that's one of the, the many rewards. Uh, Jonathan, besides reviewing, uh, we touched on, on your translator work as well. So th there's so much that you've been doing for the game now for seven years. Uh, what is it that keeps you engaged? Uh, well, I, I think back to myself. Uh, I remember it was 2005, 15 years ago, that I first basically fell in love with the game. It was really love at first sight. When, as soon as I read about it, I knew this was for me. Uh, and, I, and I just, it's the passion for the game. Uh, if I can help other people, if I can guide uh, people just starting off, uh, if I can bring them into the, the so to speak, uh, the way I was and 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 pass on the passion, and my my job is done. You know, there aren't that many opportunities where a person gets to to really make the world a better place. And I feel the geocaching in, in the sense that it gets people into the outdoors. It gets people to break out of their, you know, four walls and, and, and confine. Uh, it really does improve people's uh, quality of life. And, you know, people that even didn't even realize how, how boxed in they are. Uh, you know, it, it, you, you get them outside, even if, you know, you have to push them a little bit. Uh, it really improves them, and, and I'm just happy to be part of that process and, and, and make people healthier and, and, and make people enjoy. You know, and people laugh, you know, I, I have all these friends that, that you know, roll their eyeballs whenever I tell them all about geocaching. I, I, you know, I don't care. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's for, for us, uh, you know, crazy few, and, and that's fine. And, and, you know, find people of, you know, uh, birds of a feather and, and, and help them out and show them. All great points. Uh, Urs, how about yourself? You've been at it now for four years. What, what keeps you going? Well, on the one hand, it's giving back to a game that's given me so much enjoyment and pleasure and contributing to that and the community uh, in itself is, is a reward. And on the other hand, I think it's, it's people on all levels. It's, it's contacts with, with the cash owners in Switzerland that I meet through the review process, but also at events. Uh, it's working with my Swiss colleagues, uh, my reviewer team, an extremely cool team that has a lot of fun next uh, besides work, and, and not the least the international community. I've met some of you in, in person, but most I only know virtually through the reviewer forums. But even there, I think we have a, a very cool community that uh, has fun, uh, that works together well, that uh, that is a joy to to be part of, and that's what keeps me at it. So how about that? What a great group to have a conversation with. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And stay tuned for upcoming episodes when, again, I will be chatting with other reviewers from around the world. If you have something that you would like us to chat about on the podcast, please send us an email. The address is podcast at geocaching.com. That is podcast at geocaching.com. We always love to hear your suggestions and any feedback that you might have about Inside Geocaching HQ. Thank you so much for downloading our podcast from me and from all the lackeys at Geocaching HQ. Happy caching. Happy caching.